let's call meeting to order. Um, ah, good, John, here you are. We just called meeting to order. I heard that. Um, for a short reflection, I had heard this week, um, listening to uh, AWW, PR station, the uh, repeated um, Speak up for me, please. I'm part of hearing, even though I have hearing aids. The repeated announcement on NPR local station about a uh, shoreline, save shoreline trees.com, which is a uh, uh, new, I think, uh, nonprofit in the city of Shoreline devoted to promoting their uh, tree codes, to promoting trees in the city of Shoreline. Uh, I thought it was great. So I went and spent a little time on their um, website and uh, I realized that while we are really concerned and justifiably for the trees we're going to lose with the rapid transit program here, it's nothing like what Shoreline had suffered. 4,200 significant trees removed from Shoreline to Linwood in the expansion of light rail with 1,100 significant of, of them significant trees in shoreline and unnumbered non-significant trees removed. And they are planting 3,000 native and 1,000 non-native trees as mitigation for that. And they have a whole section on like carbon benefits of trees and so on. So I just wanted to hit a few highlights from that. I encourage you to go visit. It was really an informative website. Um, one Douglas fir tree, 30 inches in diameter, which is smaller than what we're proposing for exceptional tree status, I believe, uh, has an annual carbon offset of 580 pounds. One personal automobile with an internal combustion engine has an annual CO2 uh, carbon production of 11,000 pounds. So each of us would need 20 30 inch Douglas fir trees to offset carbon that we're producing driving a car around according to the data that they cite. They, they actually cite uh, references for all of these. Um, and to get to what their mitigation effort is for the light rail uh, deforestation, um, they are planning, they, they identify uh, that there is 1,100 trees with an estimated 638,000 pounds of CO2 per year, no longer sequestered. Uh, what they're planting, 3,000 trees that they're planting will only uh, initially produce 135,000 pounds of storage in, per year. So they are going to be a deficit over 500,000 per year over year uh, as a result of this. It's, is a significant um, problem. I mean, that light rail, they're not, I don't think they're counting reduction in single use automobiles yeah. replaced by light rail. There's a lot of things that they're not. They're just concerned for This is what you're talking about, really, of what was in the paper the other day about what is happening on Bothell Way. That's what we'll have a chance to talk about that. Oh, okay. But um, this is the shorelines. They, they are using as their replacement for estimating this five inch diameter duck fir trees. And so they're not planning five inch diameter duck fir trees. What they're planning will be five inch diameter probably in 10 or 15 years, maybe something like that. So um, that's, you know, they're, even though this estimate sounds bad, it's really worse <laughs> in the initial mitigation. But the fact that they're planning, planning to plant 4,000 uh, trees uh, to replace the 1,100 significant trees and many non-significant trees to reduce is a pretty big effort. I presume that's been funded by the, the light rail transit uh, funds. Did they say where they're planting trees? It did say where they're planting the trees, although I didn't go through the whole web. It's, it's a pretty uh, interesting and complex website. We don't. I guess the stewards are interested in this, but nothing, we don't have anything like Lake Park like this. It would be, uh, I guess they also have a tree board in shoreline. Do you know if that's true? Yeah. 
but they, uh, I guess it was founded in 2012. I did see that. I, I'm wondering if this was a new website because they've been, it's some version of that's been in operation for a couple of years. Of the tree safe board, trees. safe shoreline trees? Yeah. yeah, so it may be that they're just now doing a promotional push for it. It was the first thing to my attention. Yeah. But that's got a question. Nonprofit organization to support it. That's nice. The representative on the 153th, uh, is he or she here? Um, I'm not sure who you're referencing, but let's point around we have a um, neighbor for citizen time, okay, which will come up soon. Okay. All right. Um, let's do introductions next. Um, I'm Dick Olmsted, I'm the chair of the tree board. I'm Mandy Parker, uh, tree board member. Marty Byrne, tree board member. Larry Goldman, city council member and liaison. Shannon Swanson, city arborist. Sandy? Uh, Sandy LeVar, tree board member. John Spacretai, a neighbor, uh, wavering my decision. Okay. Uh, Doug Frugal, tree board member. And Bradley Bushnell, assistant planner. What was that again? I'm the assistant planner. Oh. And John, how do you spell your last name? John Spacretai. Spacrotelli. Spacrotelli. Sorry, Riley, you your name. You're a prospective tree board member? No, no, no. no you're just a neighbor. Public, okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Got it. All right. So, first, next item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda, and this is a very sparse agenda. So, I wanted to note a uh, few things that uh, items that I will have. Under new business, old business, if you have. Um, under old business, I was going to ask if Sandy could update us on uh, outreach activities if there is anything. If not, uh, that's okay. Um, under uh, new business, um, Bradley, you said the planning department had something. Is there going to be someone here? Uh, we wanted to discuss both possibly an Arbor Day event, and also there is a green fair the day after Arbor Day. Okay. Um, so maybe it's a green day or Yes, or okay. Yeah, so the green day. That's something that used to be held every year. It hasn't been for the last two years. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and I wanted to spend a few minutes with the work plan and prioritize what we have, you know, projects we want to take up uh, in coming months. And, and so we get lined out about who's you know, going to take lead on those things. So we adopted the work plan last time. And it, has it been presented? I guess we're supposed to have a meeting with the council, right, where I attend and present the work plan in the annual report. Yes. Do you think to schedule that or what's that? Okay. To talk to Mr. President about that first. Um, I do But we, did, we approved both of those last, last meeting. I sent this copy to you. So okay. if you would check with uh, the city council, I can do that. Yes. Uh, maybe the urge you can. Um, I'll, I'll, send, I'll send an email to Tom. Um, I spent a little too soon. Short notice for the March 9th meeting, so I would plan on March 23rd. Okay. No promises. Okay. Fine. Whatever it is. Uh, and then the last item I have for new business is uh, the chair and vice chair. And I noted last month's meeting that the rules, city rules for boards and commissions, are that chair and vice chair should be uh, elected a new each year in March by March 31st. So that means I do. All right. Um, uh, so is everybody okay with those items on the agenda? Anything else anyone wants to add? Do you have anything on the, the old business of SD3 or? We had some information about it last time, but the council has adopted uh, plans or, or resolutions or Made, there was something in the news about I can give you an update okay. later on in my session. Okay, that will come. There is a report. 
Is there anything we want to do with this paper? Or? My sense from what we just came up, we talked quite a bit about it last yeah, okay. uh, is that we're still in sort of a holding pattern to try to figure out what how the mitigation is going to be manifest, whether it's going to be funds that we will have or whether they're going to do it or whether we're going to have some control over this. Well, I guess the what I was thinking might possibly might possibly what we might possibly do is express the fact we'd like to do a little less mitigation because we have two or three things down. Express that free board our feeling. Yeah. Out. Yeah. We want to do everything they can to do some of the Getting into discussion, I think we should probably use it as a comment. So, yeah, so then we're going to the agenda. That's right. That's what right. the agenda is. Right. 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 If there's nothing else that anybody wants to add to the agenda, um, we uh, have a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Um, okay, next, citizen comments. So, this portion of the agenda is set aside for citizens' comments. We have to approve them. Uh, sorry, approving minutes. I'm jumping ahead. Okay, Riley sent the minutes around. Did everybody take a look at the minutes? Did anybody else catch the that still said January on the minutes? So, please, the uh, message to say that it was uh, the February 1st meeting and not January 4th. Otherwise, they looked okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes. Andy, thank you. A motion is there a second to that motion? Marty, good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all in favor of approving the minutes. Okay. Minutes are approved. Now, citizen so comments. So uh, please limit your uh, comments to three minutes. And the floor is yours if you have something you'd like to say. Or are you just here to attend it? But do, do you have something you would like to say at this point? You mean to start at the three minute deal? It's, yes, this and comments are uh, a specific item on the agenda. So I'm going to start. And you are the only citizen we have here in, who is signed in to oh, really? make any comment. All the rest of us are board members or staff. Yeah, I've been That's here for 31 years to make first part. And I've noticed even before driving through Lake Forest Park before I was even the city, it's a county 31 years ago. We were next by Lake Forest Park. But anyway, greenery, forestry, flowers, bushes, good bushes in it. It's great for Lake Forest Park. Well, any any part of the county, anywhere in the US. As far as that goes. So, my mitigation would be what is the balance by taking out all the trees and bushes or whatever is on the property, which I live next door to, uh, for the carbon, carbon and trees, etc. They take out the carbon. We all know this, don't we? So, as citizens, nothing wrong with bringing down the amount of trees that should be removed. Should be, I don't like even should be. I would say, if there, if you all might agree or might not, if you pull everything off and you replace it with Good uh, trees of sort in, in the near future. Well, I'll be very honest. I'm 91 years old. I won't see a lot of this later on in 10 years. Hopefully, I can be 100 and see it if there's going to be any growth on that piece of property in the way of vegetation or tree saplings. So, I would say that. Uh, we should look at this very carefully and uh, go on that kind of mitigation. That is it going to help us? Just a very tiny fraction, you know, because, like I said before, a few minutes ago, is that I was reading along Bothaway, which is part of Lake City, goes down to Canmore, etc., and up as far as 145th. So. 
all those trees that's going to come out eventually is part of our city. So let's weigh the factors. What else can I say? Ten seconds. You got ten seconds to say it. Do you have anything else you want to say? So I, we appreciate your your coming and expressing that. And there's a, a lot of John. So you know, there's a lot of concern about the removal of trees involved with the transit mm -hmm. program that's been put through. Uh, we, of course, are all very concerned about that. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the next item on the agenda is communications. Do we have any announcements or noteworthy? Uh, Thanks for communicating. March fifth uh, is next week, right? Not March fifth or April. April, sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Old business. Um, I didn't put much time and effort into developing an agenda this time, um, probably because I. My ulterior motive is to get you guys want to have somebody else at your chair. Um, Sandy, do you have any uh, thing to report about uh, public outreach? Uh, yeah, I just have one um, kind of comment question. Um, this is mostly for Riley. Um, so I um, did kind of a last minute send out to Joanne. Um, and I didn't necessarily get any feedback. So one of the things that I did have on the list for, um, for outreach was, um, I kind of do need to know a little bit more about the process and needs for publishing both in the times and for social media. So like, what are the requirements? Um, things like that. Um, actually, I have quite a long list. But um, in general, is um, there a good way of communicating with you and Joanne um, about this on a regular basis? Yeah, Sandy, I, I, I don't know if you can see me. Um, I started at the City Arborist three months ago, and so I'll be the best point of contact, I think, oh. for if, it, if you can send me an email, like, here are the few things, like here are the next three articles I'd like to write. So I can help give you just some like arborist content that you can include in it. We can stick to one uh, topic and then we can get that submitted to Joanne. So maybe if you want to send me um, an email with some of those ideas, I'd be happy to talk through some of that with you and then we can bring it to the next board meeting. Um, so everyone's on the same page. Okay, I will do that. And then just so everyone knows and and um, back at you. Um, so thanks. I will at least be on Zoom uh, from now on and we'll we'll see how I do otherwise. Um, I did know that the the proposal for outreach for a whole annual review um, does include um, both the times and the social media and it's posted on our website um so i'll i'll send you the link um to what that proposal was and then we can go from there on the details of how to execute Wonderful. yeah thank you good to, perfect what i needed thank you thank you sammy um we have had as a regular item on old business um Tree replacement plans. Um, I haven't done anything more on the, our community neighborhood tree replacement project that we discussed in the past. So I don't really have anything to report on that. Um, Doug, this might be. A, did you have a question? Well, you you sort of did um, because we had that meeting with the two folks who had some right ideas of places to put them. Yeah, so that's right. So we, Doug and I, met with. Um, a couple, someone from the Stewardship Foundation, Sally Phillips. Yes, and um, no, Sally Amasaki. Yeah, so yeah, another person from the Shoreline 
that uh, uh, historical museum. That was that was Sally Ann's so idea. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, Doug Saunders, Michael Saunders, was the person from the also from the Doug Stewardship Office. Oh, oh, Brian Saunders. Brian Saunders. But there was another woman who was there. Was the, the Phillips. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Phillips, Sarah Phillips yeah. wife of the former. She's also the chair of, of the, the climate action. That's right. I mean, she represented the climate action. Okay. Yeah. Brian Saunders represented the we did have a meeting that uh, was, you know, Doug and I represented the tree board. They invited us to meet with them. And it was, uh, there were a couple of things that they wanted to discuss. One was, you know, a united front for the mitigation for the, the bus track transit. We also talked about other possible areas where climate action and tree board interests intersected. We talked about the uh, possibility of doing tree planting here in the parking lot as a pilot study for uh, reducing heat island effect in you know, the, the asphalt on Boulder, um, which is an idea that enthusiasts were enthusiastic about. Um, uh, I am continuing to blank on the woman's name, the Japanese one. Uh, Yamazaki. Yamazaki. Sally. Sally is after first name. She had identified this property up in uh, Lake Forest Park. Forest Park, 26th Street. I actually drove up through there and tried to find the property. She had a picture of it. And then there was a little city uh, sign, and there was just an undeveloped lot there that was overgrown with uh, Himalayan blackberry. Um, so, you know, she had identified that as a place where trees could be planted. And, you know, so that's one place up in that same neighborhood that we had been considered, near that neighborhood we were considering for tree replanting. But that might be a place where we could perhaps do. Uh, Something like an Arbor Day project where you get volunteers out to clear blackberry and stuff and plant some trees or something like that. We should look into that. I mean, we should get the address for it. I, yeah. I didn't get that sort of you were getting. No, yeah, she yeah. told us what the intersection was, and so I. Oh, you want your I, I, Yeah, it was at 36. Oh, of course. Make um, another comment? Yes. Okay, it's going to be what, an approximate. Eight units on that property. I don't he's, he's talking about the development eight? project that's going that is proposed. It's a multifamily lot, and there's currently a single family home on it, and they would like to put an eight unit condo on but it. The property that we have just been talking about. I don't that's what that you've been talking about. Okay, I'm third, right? 150 yeah. 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 It required, okay. a, it required a noticing process. So. My comment is, okay, you've got eight pieces of property that's going to be sold in the, on that one piece of property, right? Okay, you and I, all of us, we may have, oh, maybe one car, but some of those people in the complex, let's we'll say a husband and wife or two buddies living together, they each have a car. Everybody has a car times two is 16 cars, which is more carbon in the neighborhood. Plus, I mean, uh, we have two apartments there and there's only two actual houses of people. John that lives on 153rd and this John here lives on 35th. So I, I have one car, John has uh, one car also. So 16 cars, possibility. Not saying it's going to be. You got eight units. It's going to sell. Mm, well, you got I, more cars than coming in. I appreciate your concern. <laughs> it's really not. That's not a tree board issue. Yeah. No. You know that's. Uh, you know, so you got cars that coming in. It's going to wipe uh, things out. That's that's outside of our purview. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. But anyway, right, this meeting that that Doug and I participated in. They had some interesting ideas. One of their other ideas was a little off the wall, some sort of uh, 
high intensity reforestation on small properties that um, appreciate you don't take any time to review it. It just sounded off the wall to me and talked back and did some research into it. Very gently told uh, Sally why this was not appropriate for our department here. But, um, that was immediately we got on them. Is there anything else about that meeting you want to? No, except that you know, but we should at some point because I think we should engage in a whole meeting with one topic. And one topic might be where are we going to plant trees? We just make a lot what appears to be a vacant lot there. We don't really know. So you can put quite a lot of trees there with a moderate amount of effort, yeah. not a great deal of permission from landowners to be city Um is that a is that a better thing to do than trying to get convince people to let you put street trees in their garden strips and things like that? Because those are they we have if some tries to just take out five hundred trees, it's a lot of mitigation. Yeah, I think we could do both. Yeah, I think both. We yeah. might consider where our priorities are. I mean, that's certainly easier if you're honest. You can put 40 trees in one piece of plot. It's a whole lot easier than find 40 landowners who want to stream. I think we can. I, I think if we sell it, we can find 40 landowners who want trees on their property. Okay. Okay. You know, but creating, creating another patch of forest in the yeah. city it's, it's, it's a different thing for having other trees. I agree. They're both really good things. Okay. Yeah, and I was, I guess, the point we should be sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 And maybe you yeah. could ask our yeah. to ours to see if she can identify undeveloped bits of property in the city. Is that, you know, they may be out there. If there was some, some sort of a mapping, online mapping program that Sally uh, or someone sent us associated with that, I think Sally did it in a way. And I tried to. Make use of it to try to because that the place that identified public properties throughout uh, King County or maybe the state of Washington, I could make it work for Okay, anything else by way of old business? All right, new business. Um, can you, can you summarize what the uh, permitting for the past month has looked like for your requests for tree removal? We've had 10, ten new tree removal permits come in, um, varying from one significant tree to 10 trees with the most in one. Um, I'd say it's lots of people that I've just done pre application phone calls and meetings with and kind of have let them know that removal permits wouldn't be issued, and so they haven't even applied. Um, that's what circumstances one. would that fall under that category? When they want to remove trees in critical areas where there's nothing wrong with the trees. Yeah. So um, that's been coming up quite a bit. And I think mostly this month has been very busy with we have two short plots that I'm looking at that are just kind of in the planning stage. Um, so no tree removal permits coming up, but just lots of development reviews for tree protection. As we're building, pretty much every project has trees within its critical root zone. And so making sure that all the construction projects are getting proper care during construction has been a very big challenge that I'm doing. I appreciate you having put together a list with a graphic for us for last month. So I just pulled the numbers off of it. I, there's still, I'm waiting on Steve, our director, to give me access to it. I'll actually pull proper reports. Uh, so we look forward to that because it was something that, you know, yep. sort of kept us abreast of what's going on. Yeah, it's definitely, we're working on it. Okay. Riley, you said there were a couple of issues from planning for Arbor Day and Big Day. Um, yeah. Um, so for the, the green, let me. Do you have the dates for these? Um, well, Arbor Day, I believe, is the last Friday of April. Uh, actually, it's not. The, that's National Arbor Day. In Washington Day. State, it's the second Wednesday, so it's April 12th. Well, sounds to me. Um, yeah, we discovered that that's. But the 29th is, I think, it's like a 
Yeah, it's the Lake Forest Park Green Fair, the 29th at the Third Place Commons. And um, Corey suggested, so the Climate Action Committee will be there and have a booth. She, sh she suggested that um, since it's time new to us, we could um, maybe at the very least just have someone uh, tag along um, with the Climate Action Committee. We don't have to have our like this team booth if we don't want to. Um, so if someone wanted to, that's an opportunity. Um, I think having a booth for us particularly would be good. That's also an option. We've done it in the past when they had these great fairs uh, before the pandemic. And we did it one at the out here for the um, farmers market one fall. Okay. That was really successful. We had a lot of people that stopped on it just had questions about uh, tree permitting and so on. And, uh, Arbors joined us on that one, and so and if you wanted to spend some time with us on a booth, that would be great. It's a good time to do public outreach. You know, I think uh, Sandy and Mandy might be able to put some thing together to you know to hand out. Uh, that might be a good time to reach. I have a lot of materials from the ISS that about proper pruning, how to oh, yeah, use. Okay. I have a lot of those trifles and like I have like a whole like display. Yeah, that we can yeah, perfect. For that. Yeah, so if we could make some sort of a sign that we could just tape on the front of the table that says like first part three quarters looks better than a hand scroll. Yeah, and by that eleven, that will be talked for you. That would be something would be nice to have that we could just stick it away and pull out every time we. Go to a green fair or a farmer's market booth, or yeah, I agree. You know, to see how that can get budgeted. We have we have a tree city Arbor Day flag that you guys could put up at the house. So there's a few things that I found around the office that I think would be in our booth. Okay, yeah, whoever is interested in green shots, me and I'll explain with Corey. I probably won't be at the event, but I could at the very least coordinate with her because I believe she will be there. And she's the head of, or she's the Staff base on my she's basically me before the climate action. So, yeah, good. And then Arbor Day, which is on the 12th, uh, you, you can and should, I think, uh, follow through on the plans that we got started for this year that ended up just getting pushed back and pushed back and almost too late to do anything with. And I think I did I forward to you guys the location. We had arrived at um, it's up on Horizon View for a tree planting. And I have a tree in a pot in my nursery in my backyard that I had we were going to go there for that purpose. It's a Japanese snowbell. It's a nice small open full sun flowering tree that uh, you know they get to be 20 to 25 feet and have a round canopy. So it would be good for an open. Next to the side, I walk up by the park. Right? Is, it, is it public property? Yes, it's on yeah. the rise of your park. And so it's, there's a lot of open space, and there's a space where, where there's a little bit of a triangle between some couple of paved sidewalks. It's just grass. It's not really part of a play field because of, of the paved sidewalks on each side of it. And there's, they planted a couple of magnolia trees not part of the park a few years ago, uh, closer to the street. Well, there, it's already a place where it's showing um, flower trees established. So, Riley, if I haven't sent you that information, I remember you talking about it. I can't find her in my email. Okay. Um, yeah, I may or may not label that, but I'll send you the Horizon View. Can you include me on that as yes. well? Thank you. Are you hoping to do this event on Arbor Day? Yes, and make it sort of a public thing. Announce yep. it, uh, sure. go up, dig the hole in advance, and, you know, cover it with a specific event, um, and then invite people to come, maybe invite the mayor to say something, or whatever. Maybe uh, Larry would be going as our council liaison. Something and just you know, who knows? It may just be people who are passing by will stop by. Oh, the last time we did a 
tree planting we did it at Animal Acres several years ago, and there were only a handful of people that showed up. But nonetheless, that's you know, we announced it, we made a deal about it, and the tree got planted. That was our thing. You could try and market it as a come watch how we how to properly plant well, that's a tree. Yeah. So it's a little bit more of an educational because a lot of people don't know how to use it. I'll get you. Sandy, go ahead. Uh, you said it's on Wednesday. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. It's so, all yeah. Okay. So, you know, one of the uh, ideas would be if we did it on a weekend, that we might get more people. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah but I wonder, I wonder if possibly the more important thing is just to have it being visible that we're doing it and I'll send them. The LFP news and things like that. Um, even people don't come to expect they know that we're doing it. Yes, I think like that's as, right. As useful as, as anything. But the, the idea, if we want, if we do want it to be a public event, expect people to come. Weekend might be nice, but it also might be nice to do it on Harbor Day too. So maybe just, yeah, days are getting long in April, so we could do it. You know, after people are off work and people are. Go to the park because it's not a great day. Do it after school and you catch all the dog walkers. Which is why we want to school. Like does, 3 o'clock, 3 30. Does the uh, parks for the, they sponsor like a yoga in the park, don't they? I don't know. They did an animal acres list. Oh, it's on a separate day. Just thinking if you could do like right after that. I could kind of do a story with that. The top of it. To the extent that I get a vote, which I don't, uh, I think we can this better. And we'll, because you, you want to do it during daytime, so if you're yeah. doing it during daytime on a Wednesday, you're going to get plenty of people that are at work. But, but we might do the event on Wednesday, 12, 13, 15, something like that. Plant or dig the hole off the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Begun. The Arbor Day process has begun on the 12th. <laughs> okay. We can actually plan it as well. How big of a tree are we talking about? Well, it's it's about uh, 12 feet tall and it's in a pot with about this big around it. So it's gotten to be a good time. It's been out of the ground for a couple of years and so I need to get it in the ground. If we're the young backs, we're going to just. If we're the young backs that are. Well, I'm going to probably have some help get some get it in the back of my pickup. Yeah, no, I, but I think we can find someone to get it up there. Okay, so the other thing we were just talking about is the idea of if we identify that a vacant lot that the city might be interested in planting, you know. Having a work day to clear a lot and prepare it for treatment. But, you know, part of our hesitation there has been going forward on this is that we still don't have a good idea about what sort of a budget we're going to have or what sort of the source of trees for mitigation, whether it's something that, that some transit is going to do or provide or whether we're going to have money to just go and spend on trees. So, it's a problem that depends on the to me, the kind of tree you're talking about is almost beyond the individual size. And if we plant a number of trees that size, you need somebody to come into the back doors. But we move that kind of easy. Yeah. Um, and with things. That's one of the nice things about having an entire lot where you can do 30 or something like that. You can have the back door. Come in with one of those loggers or something. Yeah, take 30 holes and put the trees in. Yeah. Again, I, I don't think that's. Street well, you know, maybe this is one of those things where we do the planning through the course of this year, and that might be the 2024 Arbor Day event. Something like that. Or it doesn't have to be an Arbor Day event at all. That just if we're going to plan something for planting, it would be best to do it in the fall. Yeah. Just because we, as we're getting the hotter summers, trees that we're planting in the spring are not doing nearly as well as they have in the past. Um, I'm just watching trees 
not surviving is a really big issue that's been happening over the last like six, seven years. Yeah. So yeah. I would add to that we're gonna plan to do either of these events a, a time and a day and we should be doing them should probably be done this very meeting because there's something like two of them now. Okay. Right. So yeah. well, I have a treat. I'm happy to uh, you know help uh, get it up to the place. I think we're going to shovel and do some of the digging of the hole, but it would be great to have uh, some help moving that tree up there. So whoever can assist. I'm going to be teaching again this spring, which means that. My day, my schedule is going to be a little wonky, and I may or may not even be available on that Saturday, but I probably can be available on Friday to help with prep and getting the tree position. Who else wants to? That would be the Friday, would be the 14th. I could certainly assist if it's during work hours. My weekends are pretty closed. Well, what I might need is some help, say, on Friday afternoon to get the tree. Position a good bulldog and get everything prepped, and then we could do the event on Saturday where you know the ceremonial putting of the tree in the hole. And, uh, I think we could just actually have the tree in the hole and the mayor shovel his little dirt over some or some dirt or something. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, I think liking the tree about first of all, it's all perfect of that language, and I do it. Um, it's, it might be a better thing to do. Get that all done in advance. Get all done in advance. Just have a sort of ceremonial. Yeah. This tree has been planted. We're putting the tree in right now. Another ceremony thing you could do that would be a beneficial teaching opportunity is showing people how to properly mulch around a tree to make sure that the mulch doesn't touch the tree trunk, the right thickness of it, because you don't really want more than three inches of it, and kind of talking about how far out to the drip line putting arborist chips are. Um, and doing resources around that would be very beneficial. That could certainly be done that day. That's not that's not big work. No, I meant it's easier because you can just have buckets of arborist chips that you can ceremonial dump down and rake and have the and, whole dog and the you know the tree in the hole and the soil put back in so that sort of thing in the last. Isn't this the time that Peter's supposed to be taking multiple rainbow and stuff like that? Uh no. I always mulch my trees in fall and spring. Keep it away in the spring. Yeah, I would definitely the keeping the arbor strips on top of the drips or the disturbed soil. The moisture. <clears throat> yeah, it helps maintain the moisture throughout the summer. It really, really aids. And it, it would be good if we could get one of those um, bags, so the, the slow release water bags that are used for. Do tree plantings. Does this city has something like that, or we can? Not that I'm aware of. We could probably get one though. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, but I don't know if that's something that I have access to. Or well, we must have a bucket that we could use to so we'll be able to pay for something like that. But it's not. It's, we're not talking about a great expense. Yeah. So we're not paying for a tree. Yeah. Um, I can. Definitely ask about that. Well, it occurs. Any, um, if it's going to be a hassle for you to physically move it, uh, any chance we could work with the public works department to have someone come by in a truck and actually pick up the tree and truck it over to Rise and Game? Sure. But yeah, I um, have a lot of questions to ask. Yeah. So, that one uh, might be a little bit more difficult just because planning the department we're in is way separate. From public works, yeah. and I know, like, just there's been, yeah. I, mean, I, have, sure I have a really cap truck, it has a cap on the back, but like, we can put the tree in, lie it on its side so the canopy is sticking out the back of the truck. And it's just from my house to the top of the uh, horizon field, it's a mile and a half or something like that. So it would be, I think the tree would be, I think we can get enough time. Okay, well, I will. Sandy, you had your hand up a minute ago. Was that to volunteer to help yeah. out? I was just going to say if it's on the weekend, um, then I can be available to assist. Well, 
probably it's, it's sounding like we'll probably do most of the hard work on Friday. Yeah. So that Saturday we can have the public event. And, and yeah, I met from the public event. I'm much better at peopling. Okay. Well, you can come to the public event. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody, of course, is welcome. And yeah. we just have to have us show up at least to have a few people there. What about our representatives uh, of Wake Forest Park? How are they? Negative, positive for West Carbon. Elected representatives? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you mean by it? Well, because they're in the state legislature right now, and there is something about duplexes, fourplexes, sixplexes. That, whatever, if that's passed out eventually, if it does, I hope not ever. I know our governor wants it, but I don't care about the, the planning of the future so much. That's also not. We have to take care of something now. Tree board. Because what's going to happen? Sure. sure, the cars are going to be gone one day with gas. But I'm going to be gone and we need years. to have more dense population, you know, yeah. residential neighborhoods. But that's not tree board business. So. But it's kind of important because all of us know. Yes, it's important, but it's not the tree board business. Right. So we we're here for a tree board yeah, representative. But you should think of this too. And we still have uh, people in the future is going to be living, born, and raised in the next 30 years. What are we going to have? Hopefully, all the cars will be gone gas. So listen, we have a time for some comment. <laughs> I won't see it, damn it. <laughs> Thank you for your input. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I will be in touch with. Hannah and Riley and the rest of you about planning for this. We do have one more board meeting before that, but only a week before. So we should have organizational stuff on the way before that. And I will send you uh, the information that I have about this um, as soon as I get home. Or yes. Tomorrow. But I'll bring it. What's currently at this site or on this site? It's grass. It's open. Yeah, it's you know, it would be a good place to have a tree. Yeah, well, of course, a good place to dig a hole. Yeah, a whole place like plant a tree, planting roots. Yeah, they, no, there's no trees close around. Um, I don't have any idea what the soil is like. Okay. Um, Actually, I have one quick question. Um, what is the deadline for the LFP times that comes out before the Arbor Day event? Um, uh -huh. uh, if, well, I, I think mean. it just that's the quarterly one. Oh, I, know the, I think no, that's it comes out monthly, isn't that? Oh, the monthly one that just came out like today. Yeah, that's the quarterly one that came out today, oh, okay. so right? The, every three months. Um, if we want to get something in, I think um, it's... The screen issue, it, it was due on the 15th of last month. Correct. And the, I put in an article for the tree inventory. Okay. No, no, I was just thinking if we could get like a square for the um, Arbor Day event. That's all. If we, if we get plans confirmed in the next week, I think we'd be able to get something into the the emailed out monthly one. So if we can shoot to have something kind of finalized early next week. That would be quick. That, yeah, but I, I mean, to get anything done, like we need to have the plans kind of solidified in the next week so that we can announce it and actually plan for it. I, I don't know what the status is with respect to the parks departments. Sign off on it, but I think that that was you know, those previous uh, arborist and staff person. Been, of course, if in you, case with them about when that. you send us the email with the Arbor Day, like the location, one, I'll, I'll make sure to, to follow up on anything okay. needed from the city side. Because we had picked two or three locations, yeah. and I think this is the one that they had yeah. that was best. All right. Okay, so the next item of new business I had was to take a look at the work plan and prioritize what sorts of things we want to take up to, uh, you know, in coming weeks and months. So 
one that we've just identified is the Harper Day, but we need to, uh, that's you know, an important one. And that's on that first page, from halfway down that first section. I did copies of that. I did here. Um, the web content I, item, I'm not sure if that's something we're ready to do yet, but there are uh, additional, well, there are some additional items that the code, that the council can take up with respect to the code um, once the, the tree inventory is done. But I'm not sure why we can't start looking at the rest of the content anyways and come up with some ideas. So I have Marty Sandy and Mandy down on that uh, one. So if you guys think this is something you want to uh, work on. Okay. We have the same three down for the next one, which is developed content or through public outreach. And so one item for that would be the green fair. But that could give, give us a target date to work on developing some content yeah. that we could distribute for that. So why don't we give, put that as a high priority? Well, then the next item is the Arbor Day that I have down with me and Hannah Riley is uh, lead on that. The Green Fair is April 20th. I, I think going back up to the public outreach, uh, Sandy, Marty, and Mandy, if you guys wouldn't mind just including me on that kind of stuff as well, um, I would very appreciate that. Yeah, we'll try to keep you in the loop on everything we're doing that involves contact with the public always. Yeah. We sort of haven't had a, a working arborist for. Yeah, know. oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, we're not used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's part of the reason why the board has it. Effective in the last year as we had been in previous years, as we had such turnover in both the staff and in the artist position, that it's sort of we've been spinning our wheels a lot. Um, the next one is the communication with the other stakeholder groups, and you know, that example that sort of and I did uh, last week. I think that's just something that we is a, we'll do as a, as it arises. Uh, tree walks. I'm planning on doing another one of these with David this spring. That will probably be April, May. Um, but that is, I can work on that. Um, the Heritage Tree Program on the top of the second page. This is something where I think maybe I asked you, Mandy, to look into this. Yes. Just to do some research on it. Yeah. Could, I ask you to maybe do that before our next meeting. So give you a month to start looking at that. You may need to ask Riley or someone in the city office to look into the history of this or something. That's, and even find out how it was set up and what its purpose was. It was one document that I found that I may have distributed last, in the last meeting. Um, but ask me about it. Because this is something that you know, the term, the name comes up, but it's really hard to know what it's about. It's definitely different from, it has nothing to do with our tree ordinance, but it's something that uh, got started you know, 10 or 20 years ago. And there are trees that have been designated here as trees. I don't know if there's a list up somewhere, what, but you know, it seems to me that's if this is going to be maintained in Clay Forest Park, it's it falls under the realm of tree board. If not our responsibility, at least we should hold on to it and help. Yeah, because I think it was the idea was it would be public generated. People right, would right. identify trees or nominate trees, create a uh, Rational justification for why this tree was to be named the Harris tree and it be approved by someone. And I don't know even how that was done. Well, I recall what we're reading about it, it was extremely vague. You could, you know, 
know, designate something a heritage tree because your kids used to play under or something like yes, that. Yes, right. I'm not sure that's really something I'm going to spend a lot of time. No, I, I, you know, one possible outcome is that we make the case that this should be, you know, one side or or just restrict the or because of becoming an option, restrict the, the categories, but right, or have more uh, constraints or requirements for what it makes sense in terms of treaty. Um, basic plant management. I think you know we're still wrapping up the big project that Julia spearheaded. I think there's no point in making this a priority right now because I think we're going to have plenty of other things. Uh, the tree planting uh, events. This is something we've talked about just a little bit, and I think this is. While we have some other more pressing things right now confronting us with respect to the Green Fair, the Arbor Day, and um, maybe getting figuring out what to do with the heritage program. This identifying areas is something that maybe Hannah and uh, Riley and I and Doug and whoever else is interested can sort of see what we can find in the way of city owned properties that would be possible. And when we were looking for Arbor Day locations before you guys were on board, we were talking about a couple of identified places out here. Yeah, there was a tree that died, was removed down by the bus stop. Yeah. But the people here who run the town center management group said they didn't want any more trees planted here, even though there was a nice tree there previously. And then there was one that fell out here, a willow, I think, that was close to the building. And there was some resistance to planting something back in that space um, because it was too close to the building. Not exactly what the justification was, but you know, the right tree for the right place. I think could take, there's always a tree that will go someplace, you know, it's supposed to go near, near a street or whatever. I, my interpretation of those situations is, as I understood it necessarily very well, was that the city and Merlot and Guy are the owners of the property. Got me the Seth Walker had two years ago, I think, there you might remember, I mean, the whole business of. of uh, upgrading, should we say, town center is hot. Yeah. I'll actually, I was planning to come back to that during my presentation. Okay. At any rate, it sort of solved the relationships. Well, this is something we can, you know, look at over the course of the next several months, and it's kind of put it out there. Any sort of major tree planting we want to do, we should try to fall anyway. So, you know, that's not a high priority for sure. Town center may not be played as focus, I think, so the other places are yeah, more promising. Uh, the Bachelor Creek project that's going to be wrapping up this spring, and uh, there's nothing else we need to do about that. And, um, I think the, the contractors who had done the plantings in the original are going to do one last pass and might have to be more things, do some weeding in that. Um, the make recommendations to the council on finding and review of the you know, Lake Earth Tree Canyon be starting every five years. That, Pretty vague. We're going to have to come figure that out at some point, but I don't think that needs to be a priority right now unless somebody really wants to dive into that. Or should you dive into yeah, that? I'm pretty willing to you know, write a brief summary of it of the last one, which is several years old, but I don't think it's going to make any recommendations. I just think the main thing that came out of it was that we're you can't be late for smart growing from the 90s, 45 percent, 49 percent. Do you remember what year though, this last one was? I mean, well, those are two dates on the date was slow and the date was analyzed with you three years later. But it's on the order of 2015 line. Yeah, so the, this is something that is supposed to be done every five years, it's can't be studied. And I think that it hasn't been done on that regular schedule. Well, they already comply every five years or something. It's a little not feasible. Yeah, but, there, but it could be done now. I think if we start doing it now, probably get the results okay. about five years after the last set of results were produced. Maybe I don't think you're going to be reporting to the council a lot to be done, whether we encourage the council to take for analysis of more recent data. I can think more than telling you useful things. So, so I don't know where we stand on it. That's something you want to look into and report back. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll you want to put it off for a year? I'll, I'll, I'll at least have to need it. I can try to arrange to have the data, hope you know what we did last. Um, the last report, in my opinion, was presented in a very haphazard way. We'll present it to the city. Well, maybe because you know, things are long to the city name. But uh, um, it's not very clean package to point to. So, okay, but sometime in the next couple of months, April, May, we could get able to figure out where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next item was the tree inventory, and that is in the hands of the consultants, and we will take that up when their report is in. With the council, that's something that is probably going to happen later this month. And you could just rather let me know when that is set up. I can make, or let me know when the options are. Like I said, I'm starting, I start teaching the last week of March. So I'm, my schedule is going to be booked, mm -hmm. uh, pretty solid from the last week of March to the first week of June. And it's just presenting the report and the work plan? Yeah, and I haven't done that before because I have not been the, well, not the board chair last time this was done. But you have you seen this done, Larry? Um, well, the Climate Action Committee gave a presentation at the, this last Thursday, uh, six okay. days ago. And is it anything more than presenting the document and answering questions? Um, they, they made a little PowerPoint. Uh, they were also talking, presenting the results. They did a survey on climate uh, for the community, so they can present the results of that as well. Um, if you want to do a PowerPoint, you can. That's optional, but uh, there's no fixed plans. Well, I, I don't know what I would do other than put up what's in the papers. I, I think I'd be just as soon distribute the work plan and the annual report to the council and not just be there to I can get a good sense of what to do for staff or for I think yeah. it seems to me in the past there it hasn't been done with a PowerPoint or anything, but I guess that I have done. I have a question about this annual report. Someone did that already yes, last it a, year? It was this the twenty twenty two annual report was approved there more than it's not permit related. Oh. No, no, no. It's just <laughs> it's just a report from the tree board of what our activities were yeah. last year. It has nothing to do with the city's arborist activities. Yeah. We would love to see that. I am working on that. Let's see if there's 10 months of yeah. Sandy, did you have a comment? <laughs> yeah, I just had a comment question. Um I'm kind of assuming that the one that the uh, action committee did, action council did, is on uh, the website. Is it? Climate council. The climate council. Yeah. Is that on the website? Um, and if not, can I get a copy? Um, and then maybe I can help make it into a ours into a PowerPoint presentation pretty quickly. I can certainly ask for it. Uh, I have a copy of their PowerPoint. Oh, the council members were sent a copy of the PowerPoint. I'll pass yeah. that along to Riley and then you can trade it to everybody else. That would be awesome. Thank you. And then I can help take ours and do that. Okay, so in report work plan, uh, those are uh, pending. Next, coming up with the um, We have still have on there this uh, intern tree removal replacement project. This was something that was, we found the report for that last month, but I don't recall exactly what we decided to do about it. We left it out here. Let's leave that as a low priority for right now. Um, reviewing the tree list is something that has also been out here for a long time. We really should get back to this. And I've gotten started on that already. Okay. I know I have some. It's a matter of time. Feel free to, years ago. if you'd like to share any edits okay. you have with me. I think the main, I have a bunch that I have removed and I'm not allowing anymore that are on that list. I would like to have invasives and trees that are not allowed also on that list. We should have, I think, a separate list of things that we discourage. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and then giving people better, like, 
tree species that are best placed in certain locations. Um, and then also adding a column for trees that are shown to be resistant to climate change. Because I know we have this huge push in the city to plant natives, but a lot of our natives are not necessarily doing well with our climate change. And so I know we have like natives or the native substitutes. And so I'm hoping to include quite a few more trees that have been scientifically shown to do better. Yeah, so that would be something like having yeah. another column in that list that yeah. would have some information about that. So yeah. That one of the concerns that we had, had discussed past years was that the list should not be considered a prescription, right? It should be a suggestion. Correct. And there's still wording in the the website someplace that says that trees must be selected from that list for replacement trees. And that and, you know, that's one of the changes I think we can make on the list. Did you get the list that they called like two or three or three board chairs ago? He was doing it just before he was just what was for retired with three board Tim Hong. Tim Hong, yeah. He, he had quite a long list of things that he wanted to add to it and take out of it. Um, did, did that filter down to you? I don't remember seeing that. I don't song. believe so. If anyone has a copy of that, feel free to email it to me. I'll look up what I have. I know I had just gone through me at a time. Yeah. Comments and things about it. No, I'm on my own. Oh, okay. Well, Tim had listed a whole bunch of the trouble is he listed a lot of different things. And as a person who's had beautiful trees in his own yard, the most valuable that thing is the, the area, the canopy area to produce in every yeah. 10 years. That was that was one of the big discussions too. That a lot of those trees don't have estimates of canopy area. Associated with them, or the estimates are there or not accurate. Right? Well, what they on the list, all of it is the 30 year maturity, and they're assuming that 30 year maturity is full tree canopy maturity. That's where that number has come from. It's from like species lists that show the crown spread. So, definitely, there's some issues there. So, well, I guess my point was so if you don't have those numbers for tree, you're still such a heavy enough list, probably not concerned. Because you know, what people like me do, they have to take a tree down and look at this. Okay, look, my wood in there. I would like to have in my yard that will give me X square feet of coverage. But two trees or three trees will give me X square feet of coverage. That's to me the most important use of that tree. It's not, not the suggested species, although that's really useful. But the sizes that you, that you need to obey the law. Okay, so. Uh, I have Hannah Dick and Doug on that list, and I think we're probably the best to go over that. Too. Okay, the last two things on our work plan are reviewing the comprehensive plan for tree related goals um, and review the council strategic plan. I'm not sure when we either of those uh, comprehensive plan and strategic plan will be next done. I don't know if they are. Annual things are biannual or five year plans or whatever. The top plan is five years. It's current, the planning commission is currently working on it. Once they've done their draft, then you can take a look and provide feedback on truth related matters. Look at the council. And do you have any idea about what that draft will be available? Um, the city needs to approve it in 2024. Okay, so, so that's, that's going to be. Um, I think I, I think we, we should assume the planning commission is going to have it for a few more months at least. Maybe twenty twenty three, three months. Yeah. The strategic plan. Um, let's have a council retreat. Uh, I don't know when. Okay, um, so I will send out a note with what I have come up with here as what our priorities are and dates to have done and send that out to you in the next few days. Would this be the 2023 work plan action item? I said 2021. What did you say? Like you? On, the, on the front page, it says this is 2021 work plan. Is oh, that you know, even the 
Okay. Yeah, I, I changed the date on the top. Okay. Thank you. That's why it's a draft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a draft should have been taken off there too, because so we have two kids. Oh, yeah, that's Thank you for noticing that. Okay, so that is uh, the last thing I have on the business is chair and chair fund. So um, I'm glad we're all here. And as I noted in my email to the board today, so Larry and Hannah did see this, but I included my name, is that the city expects us to elect the chair and vice chair. In March each year. Um, they expect there to be both the chair and vice chair for, for at least the last three years. I don't think we've had a vice chair. Um, and it's, uh, I think that what I would like to see us get into is a uh, rotation of chairs so it doesn't fall to be a burden to one person for many years. We did have a, a um, chair, Gordon. Oh, this is like, yeah, no, David Kluan yeah. was chair for, for several years, and he was really good, but he was really into it. And it sort of created a uh, sense for many of the rest of us on the board that we didn't have to take responsibility for leadership. And I think that was not good. And so I would like. Tonight, to have a discussion about you know moving ahead with election of a new chair and a vice chair, and have there be a succession, intended succession. Whoever takes on um, vice chair role will move to chair the next year, unless there's extenuating circumstances that really mitigate against that. And I would say that it's not a burden. Today. I've learned a lot of, more about the pre board in the city in the year that I've been doing it. And I had in the three years or so that I've been on the board before that. So I think that's a good thing for each of us to uh, learn about it and get that experience. So, do I have any comments, discussion, uh, expressions of interest or? I'm not a board member, but I think that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so. Anybody? I, I held back from calling up any individual ones of you before this meeting to try to uh, apply pressure to find someone who would be willing to do this. Um, because I wanted to let everybody, anybody who had an interest in wanting to do it step forward. It doesn't have to be somebody who's been on the board the longest. I think the chair before me was um, um, her. She was good. She was yeah, good. she was very good. She was new on the board. She had just joined the board and we needed a new chair. Sam Pond had resigned uh, and uh, she took over and she was really organized and so did a good job. And she moved right. Then she moved out of town and stepped off the board. Margaret, Margaret Cassidy. That's right. Um, so, is there anyone who would be interested in going to take Who's going to lead or want to lead? That's a question. I really don't want to be chair, and I will be vice chair if somebody else wants to be chair. Okay, that's a good start. That's a good start. I, I will say that the person I was going to call first is part of because she has a little more experience on the board. I think you have a really good um, sort of book to be the board's needs. Don't consider it, but I need to know what the title is. I have a leadership position in the situation, which my sense is that this is, you know, the, the where I found it was that the week before board meeting, uh, 
it probably requires a few hours of sitting down, thinking about what the agenda items should be, uh, and working with Riley on that. And before Riley was here, Cameron, I think, was the yeah, first. Cameron did not, oh, I don't mean to, this as criticism. What well, Cameron always did was he would get in touch with me uh, a week or 10 days in advance and say, can we meet by Zoom on Friday afternoon and go, go over setting up the agenda? And that sort of forced my hand to spend a few, you know, a little time before that meeting to think about what uh, I wanted to cover in the meeting that week. And then we put it together and then it was ready and it didn't come down to the last minute uh, as it has for me the last couple of months. So, and then after the meeting, there might be a little time uh, getting notes out to, and there's notices that need to go back to and or Riley or to three more summarizing things. That have been done. I bet that I put in uh, five or six hours. Then on top of the time that I would like to put on the outreach that we're going to do, plus the other responsibilities I have. I would like to gently point out that if we do have a vice chair, then that can kind of spread the load out for the planning meetings. That's true. I think of the vice chair as somebody who steps in one. Uh, the chair is available, but it doesn't need to be that right. It could be a shared leadership responsibility. We would like to share the leadership responsibility. I just don't want to run meetings. Well, Mandy or Sandy, would one of you be willing to uh, step in as chair? I, I absolutely cannot right now. I may someday in the future, but I think a chair and vice chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe next, maybe next year. I'm really, I uh, absolutely. The volunteers should take on the role of vice chair this year, and we have a succession. So my point here is that I would think it would be good for us as a board and good for the city that we protect if everybody rotates through this. Right? And, and you know, if if we have a full board of seven, or even if we only have six. Uh, and we each serve two, three year terms. That means only have to do this once, right? So uh, it's it really is not that. I I would volunteer to assist, but I my personal life won't allow for it right now. Sorry. Oh, but I'll definitely volunteer to like you know help anyone that needs it in the background. Do great PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> um, Sandy and Doug, co chairs. Does that work? You can sort of uh, <laughs> alternate with uh, chairing meetings or do something like that. So, are you going to be back in house, Sandy, or is it? When are you going to do you think you'll be back in house? You know, I cannot commit to a time frame. Uh, so I am, uh, yeah, I, I cannot commit to a time frame. Sorry. I can't. <laughs> no volunteers. Also, the, the, uh, the city rules for boards and commissions state that if a uh, board doesn't elect a chair, the mayor will appoint a chair. Yeah. I'm not sure the mayor even knows that this is the case, right? But, I'll, I'll mention it at the next council <laughs> if, if necessary. But um, you know that is if we are at an impasse, we're not going to do it. And you're not going to do it again. You say. Well, I would. I'm. You know, coming up on uh, the spring, I'm going to be teaching. That's going to be a big uh, time commitment for me. Um, and after that, I would have more. Always hoping to do more travel this summer. So it's, I have found that my personal life has had distractions that has kept me from doing as effective a job as I would like to do. So, 
good like you chair and I'll be the vice chair and do as much as I can to spring. Well, so that might work. If there's nothing that says we can't change chairs in the middle of a year, um, if, you know, summer rolls around and someone else has more time to take it over. Please raising your hand, though. Wow. Well, we need a nomination. <laughs> I nominate you. Ah, yeah. Okay. Any other nominations? Do you accept the nomination? I'll accept the nomination. With some reluctance. I, I got something about the, you. the board. To the chairman. Okay. Have one of these people or two or three of these people that are willing because they don't have outside activity if you're sort of younger. Everybody's younger than I am here. So you get somebody 65 to 75 years old, in a way, speaking. Maybe he has a little more free time. I don't know about you, young man, but um, I don't have the time. Well, maybe I could do something if I was into this a little more. I think after tonight, I'm going to have to do something Excuse with thank you for your This is a board uh, decision that we have to make right now. Appreciate yeah, it. Interest in it. But it kind of interests me that, sir. So we're, we got to discuss this, though. Uh, shall I leave, maybe? You're, you can leave, but you're welcome to stay. But I, so I have to do any kind of voting? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a privilege. And you're going to see me, and Thank maybe you. you know, probably see me, and it'll give me a little more idea of your work or whatever work you're doing for Lake Forest Park. I've been in Lake Forest Park for 30, almost 32 years, and I'm still only 91 years old, but I'm going to be kicking around a couple more years in. Anyway. Again, it's a privilege. Thank you. I'm going to be here again, maybe not with this group, but. Something else in this Lake City, uh, I'll look in the news, uh, Lake City paper or whatever, and uh, hopefully I'll get into a little more politics in a way. I was once into it 55 years ago. Thank you. Thank, Thank you again. Good night. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to have a uh, paper ballot, but all in favor of the chair. Okay. Um, we have a nomination for vice chair. We don't. I don't. I can't nominate myself. No, so that's why I'm asking somebody. <laughs> to be Marty nominates Doug for vice chair. Okay. Uh, any other nominations for vice chair? Okay. All in favor of Doug for vice chair? All right. Thank you, Doug. Um, I think that's it for the agenda. Reports and announcements. Larry, do you have So first, um, the two, I'm sure which two of you who were up for reappointment were reappointed by the city council for another three year term. Uh, Sound Transit. So the first thing, uh, uh, Sound Transit has set a date, uh, March 15th, uh, at Brookside Elementary for an open house. It is from three to seven. Um, you might have seen there's a news, a little news flash about it. Um, as far as I can tell, it's basically just a four hour drop in session. Um, I mean, anyone who's interested, uh, whether it's about trees or not, I encourage you to pop in. We are, the city staff are trying to push down transit to adjust the meeting and maybe make the last hour like a community Q and A. Um, we don't feel that four hours of pure drop in is the best use of time, because especially if a number of residents are asking the same questions over and over again. So we would like it, you know, ideally it would be maybe three hours of drop in, and one hour of, you know, let's all sit in the auditorium and have a QA and a with Sound Transit together. Whether they do that, I don't know, they, they, we'll, we'll see. Um, regarding tree, so um, tree code. Uh, no official updates, so I have been pushing for this to be on the 
future agenda. Uh, we recently finished up the retaining wall changes and that there's a SEPA process and a single state. Um, and now I think once that's off the plate, now we're going to do the trees. Uh, my hope is that, I don't know the timing, um, it, it might be, you might be able to consider it at the April meeting, otherwise I'll just ask for informal feedback. Uh, three areas that I want to make sure are covered um, that the public has brought up. Number one, ensuring that right of way 522 is covered by our tree code, which I believe it is already. Two, uh, confirming what the rules are for tree placement in right of way, and if it's different than in a residential lot, um, whether there needs to be some official codification of is it a one for one, is it a canopy? And a replacement, but just making sure that's written down. Uh, coming up with a plan for what to do if the, if the trees can be replanted, because if 500 trees are taken out of the corridor, maybe you can get a small fraction of them along 522, but not all of them. So coming up with an official plan there. And then would it be Sound Transit actually doing the replanting itself, or would it be Sound Transit paying into a fund? Um, that's also on the table as to what would, would both options be available or is one of those options going to be a required option. So these are all things that I'm looking to see in a revisions to the tree code, but as of now, there isn't anything official that's been drafted. Great. Yeah, and a matter of the replanting, it makes an awful lot of sense for Tom South Francis to replant anything they, in the strip they've just raised. I mean, if they're going to plant trees within that, if trees are going to be planted within that strip, it certainly makes sense for town transit to do it. Okay. If, if trees are going to be planted in this lot that Dick and I saw a picture of, that's more debatable. That's just my opinion, of course. But I mean, if they're if they have construction equipment there and everything like that, and they're working that land, it makes a lot of sense for them to plant them. Yeah. And then also um, maintenance, and that whether it's town transit replanting or paying, what sort of like how long would there need to be? It's like a maintenance observation period to make sure that the tree actually thrives. So again, these are all things that we're looking to cover. It's just a matter of is staff time is limited, and so they were focusing on the retaining wall changes. Now I believe they're going to pivot to trees, but I'm, yeah, I'm not totally sure. But I believe that's the plan. Um, third item. Um, this one's a state legislative update. So there are a couple of bills that. Um, one bill would have basically invalidated the tree code. That bill died. It basically would have said that tree codes can't preempt development standards. Uh, but other than that, that bill failed to progress. Um, there are a couple of bills regarding housing. Was that? was that a, a liberal bill to make um, yeah. the dense building closer, easier? Yeah. Um, sorry, um, I, I, I badly misspoke. Um, what the code would have done, it would have made tree banks mandatory. A tree bank, if the developer says, I'm not going to replant a tree, but I'll pay you the cost. And then it's up to the city to figure out where the tree goes, but it won't be on this one. The, law, the proposed law would have made that a mandatory alternative to the tree code saying you have to replant it on your property, which would, I suppose would have effectively neutered much of our tree code. But that bill is planned. Um, two housing bills. Uh, the first is 5466. That was passed by the Senate, uh, I'm going to say about four hours ago. Um, that's the one that says if you are near a, tra a major transit stop and all of the stops along 522 qualify, then basically wherever you're allowed single family housing, you can build apartments. So this would primarily affect the town center. Um, as it's written, it would be a fair bit. So right now, we can build up to 300 apartments in town center. That's what the city council passed a couple years ago. This would be substantially more than that. Ironically, it probably would bring Merle and Dyer back to the table because they balked because they thought the city's number was way too low for them. Um, so there may be future development at town center. The second bill is 1110. That's the missing middle housing bill. It would basically say in Lake Forest Park, I guess it's currently written, um, all lots that allow single family would allow fourplexes. And if you are within walking distance of transit or a school or a park, actually, I think it makes transit and parks, then allow six plexes, so six units on a lot. 
Um, that one is, they're, they're both going through the process. Um, I just bring it up. Um, you know, I'm not saying which way to lean on any of those. Just be aware that either of those bills would lead to more development applications, which would have impacts on the tree growth. Um, a third bill, uh, any use, would basically say that uh, if a lot is more than 4,500 square feet, you have to allow two ADUs, one attached and one detached. Currently, the rule is, I believe, it has to be over 10,000 square feet to get you a detached. So there would be potentially more ADUs being built. Um, all three of these, if there's more development, potentially more treatment. So I just want to, again, it's out of our hands, other than you know, Bob, Vladi, Pro, or Con to our state legislature, the legislatures. But just wanted to put that in there. These are statewide regulations that they're not. Oh, yeah. They would be statewide. Uh, I believe that the focus is on growth management area cities. And so the fact that we are in, we're subject to the Growth Management Act and we are contiguous to Seattle. So we would be impacted by all of these. That would be one uh, one 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 zero one about four places in the city above like six thousand. Um, either way, it's a certain threshold. It's the old. So the current version says the higher standards are if the city is more than I believe seventy five thousand. There you go. Or if it is in the contiguous growth boundary with Seattle, yeah. which basically means all of Western Kingston, Orange yeah. County qualifies. So. We would qualify for, for that bill on another. At least as the bill is currently written. Um, so that's a true related state leg uh, legislator. Um, I think that's about it for me. Um, yeah, there are, I mean, I'll keep, I'll be sure. Depending on the time frame for revising the tree code, we're all uh, about right away planting. Ideally, you'd have a chance to discuss it at your April 5th meeting. We're looking to get the pro so the process is we kind of solidify language and then we don't vote on it. Then the city sends it to the state to get approval. Then we have an official public hearing and we vote on it. So we're trying to get it to the state as quickly as possible. If that would be after April 5th, I would say that's you know, at your next meeting, weigh in on that discussion. If we're looking to get it in before then, I would say. I'll send it out, it'll be a public record. I'll send it to everybody. And if individuals want to provide the individual feedback, I will take that feedback to the rest of the council. But there would be no means for you to have it, unless you had a special meeting to discuss this, there would be no mechanism for you to have a joint discussion before it. Then. So, any questions? I think I'm pretty fast on that. Just a comment. Just or liberal Democrats like me, I guess, really want to see more trees, but we also want these folks really think we should have more dense urban planning so we don't have urban sprawl going on. I don't really have a very good personal way to deal with that inconsistency. I don't know if anybody else does. But you can't you can't really have denser 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 uh, population, which most of us think is a good idea. Without making it a lot harder to keep a good tree camp. Then the of that is deforestation was strong. But yeah. And of course we think that plant up if you don't if you don't have uh denser canopies here or go off the suburbs countries that part of the suburbs or something farther off the suburbs. Well three kind of yeah. trees are trade off. I think the trade-off is that you would have to have management zoning, whatever, in more remote areas that prohibit you know, to retain the canopy there and and then have less canopy in the high density areas. And that's where it breaks down because in the more remote areas, there tend to be fewer restrictions on development rather than more rigid restrictions on development. And sorry, if I could add one more thing up. So I, I'm not sure. So the, the two housing bills, they try to cut through some of the red tape that would prevent these houses being approved. And so the city might need to make changes to the tree code. Uh, the concern would be if the tree code was found to be too draconian and preventing the new housing that's allowed, then that could lead to lawsuits against the city for having an incompatible code. Do you know the timeline of when these properties are to be presented in front of like, the process? 
Um, well, the deadline to pass the first house is next Wednesday, March 8th. And ultimately, the session ends around, around April 20th, I think. So that's ultimately the deadline for final passage. Um, I, I should, um, but I speak too fast. I shouldn't have said lawsuit. That's a, a very sensitive word. Um, the concern is that the, would the current tree code be compatible with these new laws? And so might there, might there need to be revisions? And so, um, but again, that's, we don't even know the final, if these bills will pass and if they'll be amended. And so there's a lot of uncertainty. I just want to put it on, on people's radar. Oh, no, it looks like Sandy was talking, but you did. How do we spin that? <laughs> okay, any other announcements for anything? Here we go. Okay, agenda items for our next meeting. We have a few things that people want to specifically to be on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and try to do a PowerPoint presentation on the canopy study, not the inventory, but the canopy study. Okay. Can we do a PowerPoint study presentation? You read it. What was that? If I get you a, if I get you a PowerPoint, can you project it? So oh, yes. Right, yes, yes. put together five or ten minutes of describing what the canopy study was and what we found. Five minutes, five or ten minute terms. Andy, do you want to try to look up? What you can about yeah. the heritage sure. tree and to report back. Okay. Um, and I think final planning for the Arbor Day will be on the agenda for next time. And Green Fair. So, Sandy, if you could have some idea for the next meeting. What do you want to um, put together to have for the Green Fair table when we have a booth for a public event? Um, and present something to us, that would be great. Mm -hmm. You can work with Anna, you know, so she has some mm -hmm. materials already that we might be good for that. Right. And then uh, related to that would be also for the Arbor Day. Yes. The Arbor Day uh, planning. I'll uh, be in touch with you and Hannah Riley. We've got to get the final you know, planning and permissions around that. Mm -hmm. Amazing that people are catching up already. It's surprising. Okay, anything else? Uh, before we adjourn, Mayor, motion to adjourn. Doug moves, second. Party, all in favor, adjourn. Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your renewed support for my role in the chair. If I just don't show up sometime, don't go. You were your friend, Charles. You said you were doing something about the story. The tree, yeah.